All right, chip of the day. People love chip of the day. Uh, I've got 10 of them. Uh, they're a nice little package here. And uh, they were, uh, I got them on eBay from Bulgaria. Yeah, all the way from Bulgaria. Shout out to all of my f fans in Bulgaria there. Um, what are they? Well, they're a diode. Uh, and they're a special diode. Uh, they're not silicon and they're not germanium. They are gallium arsenide. Very cool. Gallium arsenide LEDs were very popular, probably still are, for microwave stuff. In fact, the division of Hewlett Packard I worked for, the optoelectronics division, started out making gallium arsenide diodes for the microwave division of Hewlett Packard, and then they got bought out. It, it was kind of a startup, and they got bought out by HP and became the Division 001 of uh, Hewlett Packard, the optoelectronics division, and they built diodes, gallium arsenide diodes. And uh, one day they figured out they glowed in the dark and they started making LEDs out of them. So uh, these are not LEDs though, these are tunnel diodes. Yes, tunnel diodes. I haven't had any tunnel diodes in my hands before, so this will be fun for me. Uh, they're a very strange package. And uh, yeah, so I have the uh, the AI301G, uh, that's the gamma, and uh, there's some specs here, uh, operating from 9 to 11 milliamps kind of thing. I think these are absolute max ratings, maybe, not quite sure, uh, and uh, yeah, then there are these cool graphs. And uh, well, that's what we want to do today. We want to make some of the graphs. So the um, panel diodes have a really, really weird graph. Let me draw one, because uh, they're very, very interesting. So normal diode, okay? Okay, see that? Normal diode, uh, voltage and current. Normal diode does this, right? And, you know, maybe this is 10 milliamps. And maybe this is 0.6 volts, something like that, right? So it's typical, typical diode, germanium diodes might be a little bit shorter, uh, or, or shock key diodes and stuff. Okay, but they have a curve like that, all right? All right, what we're going to get today, though, is a tunnel diode. And a tunnel diode goes up very, very rapidly, and then falls, and it goes up like a normal diode again. So this is going to be around one volt over here. And it's going to have this funny little thing here where this is current, this is voltage. So as the voltage goes up, the current goes up like normal. And then whoops, when, when the voltage goes up, the current goes down. And then it, whoop, then it starts going up again. And then it looks just like a normal diode af, af, after that. So uh, this one has the curves right here. All right. So it's showing that it goes up really fast and then it goes up after that. So here's one volt. And so can we, can we reproduce this? Okay, I have a curve tracer, so let's go play with the curve tracer. All right, so we are 0.2 volts per division and two milliamps per division. So uh, there's two milliamps, four milliamps, very, not very much voltage yet. In fact, we can zoom in on that, let's see here. Let's go up here to six milliamps. Let's zoom way in there. Yeah, see, we're only 50 millivolts. We're not even, we're not even for about 30 millivolts and we're still going up, okay? And we go up and we go up. So uh, two, four, six, eight. Here's 10 milliamps and whoa, what happened? <laughs> what happened? Okay, so we're right here. And you can see it's just starting to bend over. Let's zoom in on that. See, it's just now starting to bend over. And then, whoo, it just, something funny happens. So let's, here we go. Let's zoom way in on it. So we go up, 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 up. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, wham! And then this funny thing happens over here. And this is what's known as tunneling. Um, the barriers, the, the, the diode barriers, the P-junction, N-junction barrier, 
is broken through. It tunnels through that barrier and it takes a shortcut over to the other side there. So yeah, it's, it's a f it's funny business going on. So let's zoom back out again. And then after, after it gets over to this side, then it just acts like a normal diode. It just keeps, it keeps going up and up and up. Okay, so there is that funny curve that we saw on the data sheet. And if you notice, let's zoom back out again. If you notice from here to here, it's kind of no man's land in there. Now, you always see it in the um, print that there's this solid line that kind of goes down and back up again, but not in this one. It's hard to reproduce what's going on in that no man's land there. And I'm sure people who have used these things know why. I believe it has to do maybe with some self-oscillation um, and it's just not staying in that zone for very long. It's whacking back and forth. Um, I'm not quite sure, um, but we will try to get to the bottom of it. Um, so um, when you use these things, I think you actually want to operate it here in this kind of fictitious area. <laughs> and that's where you have this negative resistance or negative, negative whatever. Um, it's not going the right direction. And I think you kind of want to operate over here, um, which, is a, which is a really weird thing to do. So I thought um, curve tracers are kind of extinct now. Um, people just use uh, equipment and software to do these curves and stuff. So yeah, let's do it the modern way. We'll go and write some uh, Python code and see if we can't reproduce this uh, with a fancier instrument than my trusty curve tracer here. Okay, we are going to be using the uh, Keithley 2400. It will be able to source voltage and measure current very accurately. And so that's the uh, equipment they're going to use. And then we will need to write some software. Okay. So uh, we will come over this way. All right. So we have a, uh, some Python code here where we are going to, uh, um, have a start voltage and a max voltage. So I'm going to sweep between one and uh, zero and 1.2 volts. I'm going to do 50 steps. I'm going to set a max current so it won't go over 12 milliamps. And uh, let's go ahead and run, run this thing, okay? All right. And it creates that graph. So um, let's see here. Let's get it nice and straight on the screen here. All right. So once again, we have volts and current, just like the curve tracer. And it went up and up and up and up and then bent over and wham. And then over here, it's acting like a normal diode. It's clipping at 12 uh, milliamps because that's where I set the, the current limit. But um, this is the no man's land right here. And so it does fall, but then it kind of just kind of stays at but one particular value and then it drops back down again. And this is the region here where you expect it to be a, a kind of a continuous line from here to here, uh, kind of a load line in this direction. But it's got this flatness going on there. So anybody who knows about tunnel diodes, tell me why I'm seeing that instead of a line. Is it due to oscillation? Um, if it is due to oscillation, can you get rid of it? I've seen some papers where they put in uh, some filtering in the measurement system where they put in some inductance to kill real high frequencies. Maybe I should put a, maybe I should put a ferrite bead. And yeah, let me do that, it'd be really easy. Let me slip a ferrite bead on this thing and see if that doesn't help. All right, so I've slipped a little uh, ferrite bead on that lead there. And then let's rerun the program and see if that, uh, to see if that does anything. And it did nothing at all. So <laughs> I guess that, that doesn't help. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what that is. Um, or maybe these are bad. Maybe I should test a second one. Let's do that. Let's test, a, let's test a second one and see if they both behave the same. All right, well, there's diode number two. Diode number two looks a little bit different. We're getting a little bit more over here, a couple extra ones there. 
and then it does its funny business again. So they are all tunnel diodes and they all sort of do the same thing. Um, so I'm going to have to do some research on finding some circuits that can use tunnel diodes. Um, I know they're good for oscillators. Um, I believe people use them for mixing. People use them for frequency division or so. I don't know. They're kind of a funny thing. I think they're real specialized art. <laughs> Not many people actually use them, but uh, yeah, I'm going to have to dig up. So I, I, I want to at least make an oscillator. I think that would be a simple thing to do, but I just need to research. Um, I just wanted to get this video out to show you the, uh, the tunnel nature of it and uh, maybe get some information from you guys. Anyway, chip of the day has been an AI301G.